right, guys. We're going to do 11-2, volume of prism and cylinders. And our objective is to learn and apply the formula for the volume of the prism. Learn and apply the formula for the volume of a cylinder. All right, the volume of a three-dimensional figure is the number of non-overlapping unit cubes of a given size that will exactly fill the interior. And we have a principle here that states if two three-dimensional figures that have the same height and have the same cross-sectional area at each level, they have the same value. So here's your two um, three-dimensional shapes, and here's your cross-section, this quadrilateral, and they have the same height, and the cross-section crosses at the same level, so their volume is equivalent. Okay. Volume of a prism is the area of the base times the height. Remember, you name the prism by the base, the base of the two parallel sides. So this is a triangular prism. So the area of the base is the area of a triangle, and then you times the height of that prism. Just like for a rectangular prism. It's still the area of the base times the height, but the area of a rectangle is length times width. So that's how they're getting this formula. And then for a cube, again, it's still area of the base times the height. The base is a square. Area of a square is side squared. The height is squared, and that's how they're getting side cubed. So it doesn't matter what type of prism you have, if you start with this formula, you'll be able to use it. Okay, we're going to apply this now. We've got a regular hexagonal prism, and we're going to round to the nearest tenth, and we need to find the volume. Okay, so we have a hexagon as a base, and the area of a regular hexagon is one half of your apothem times your perimeter. All right, so let's do perimeter first. Perimeter is 9 times 6, because the hexagon has 6 sides. And then let's do the apothem. Okay, so we need to find central angle. So we have 360 divided by 6, and you get 60. So this is 60 degrees, this here is 9. And this right here is the apothem, so let me redraw that smaller triangle. So this segment is half of the 9, so it's 4.5. We're trying to find A here. This angle is half of the 60, so that's 30 degrees. So therefore this angle here has to be 60 degrees. Okay, so your apothem is going to be um, the tangent of 30 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. So A equals 4.5 over the tangent of 30 degrees. All right, well, we've got everything. So the volume is area of the hexagon, one half. Your apothem is 4.5 divided by the tangent of 30 degrees times the perimeter. And then we have to times it by the height of this prism, which is 12. going to get approximately 2,525 and 3 tenths cubic feet. Okay, find the volume of a triangular prism with a height of 9 yards whose base is a right triangle with legs seven and five. Okay, so we have a prism. Here's our formula. 
our base is a triangle, so we have to find the area of that triangle and times it by the height of this prism. All right, so let's look at this triangle. It's a right triangle, and we have legs of 7 yards and 5 yards. Okay? So it looks like we've got everything we need here. You're going to take half. The base is 5. The height of that triangle is 7. And then you're going to times it by the height of the prism, which is 9. And you get approximately 157 and 5 tenths cubic yards. All right, I'll let you read this one on your own. So to find the volume of the rectangular prism, you're going to use your formula, your base times your height. When you substitute that in, you're going to get 3,375 cubic feet. However, they want it to be in gallons. So we need to do dimensional analysis and change this to gallons. So your first ratio be to 3,375 feet over 1 times, remember with dimensional analysis, you want your units diagonal so you can cancel them out. So we have 134 thousandths cubic feet equals 1 gallon. We're going to cross simplify our feet. Then we're going to multiply like it is um, a fraction. You're going to have 3,375 over 134 thousandths, and let's estimate that to 2,000, I'm sorry, that's 25,187 gallons. Okay, so here's one of our answers. to do the density, the weight, okay? So we have 2,587 gallons, and we need to change that to pounds. Dimensional analysis again. We can cross out our gallons, and then we can multiply straight across like fractions. And when we do that, we're going to get approximately 209,804 pounds. Here's your second answer. That is the weight. Okay, the principle also applies to cylinders. The two stacks have the same number of CDs, therefore the value is the same. Uh, volume formula for a cylinder is the same. It's still going to be the area of the base times the height. However, in a cylinder, the base is always the same. It is a circle. So it's going to be the area of a circle, which is this right here. Pi r squared times your height. Okay, so we need to find the volume of a cylinder. Area of the base times the height. Area of a circle formula is pi r squared. Um, the height is given and the diameter is given. So 
So we need to find the radius, take the diameter, take half of it, so now we can substitute in. We need our answer to be in terms of pi and rounded to the nearest tenth. So in terms of pi, it is 1,134 pi cubic inches. And then when you multiply with that pi button, you get 3,562 and 6 tenths cubic inches. Okay, find the volume of cylinder with the base area. So the base equals 121 pi square centimeters. Height is twice of the radius. Give your answer in terms of pi and rounded to the nearest tenth. So we need to find the radius. Well, this here is the area of a circle. So what we can do is we can substitute that in for the area and find out what our radius is. So our radius is 11 centimeters. Therefore, our height is going to be 22 centimeters. Now we can find the volume of the cylinder. Okay, well it's given us the area of the base, so what we can do is we can just substitute in the 121 pi right there and then times it by the height, which is 22. And we get 2,662 pi cubic centimeters. And then when you times it by your pi button, you're going to get 8,362 and 9 tenths cubic centimeters. All right, I'm going to need to stop and do a part two, so I'll see you in just a minute.